What's up guys, Trail here, better known as Budget Bill, and today we are doing a little bit something different on this channel. I actually want to talk about something that's more in line with motivation and the people that are interested in the entrepreneurship. And today was just announced this morning, according to Forbes, that Jay-Z is now worth a billion dollars, or his fortune is at one billion dollars. He has basically built this from, uh, you guys, if you don't already know, his history goes way back to where he used to sell crack cocaine in the projects. I believe it's Marcy Projects. And now he is worth a billion dollars. And we're going to talk about that today. And not just because we want to um, glorify from what he's done in the past or, or things like that, but we wanna look at it from more from a perspective of entrepreneurship as well as motivation for you guys, as well as it is, as well as, as well as it is for me as well, is motivation because knowing what he came from and what he worked hard on and producing over the years and where he is today. I believe Jay is around 44, pushing 45, but yes, we're gonna talk about this today. It was announced on Forbes.com. You guys can go out and check it on the website that he is now worth a billion dollars. And we're gonna talk about all those different things that add up and make up that one billion dollars, all right? Um, the reason we're talking about this on the channel today is because Jay-Z is pretty much my favorite rapper, my favorite artist. Uh, whatever you want to call it. I know some people out there don't like him, but regardless to, to whether you like him or his music, still knowing where he came from and how he turned that around and to produce what he has today using his talents, he was able to recognize his talents a long time ago and be able to populate his talents into which he can monetize from them from um, getting people excited, uh, sharing his music with him, his lyricist, um, and just his whole his whole demeanor. Uh, in addition, him meeting Beyonce uh, 10, 15 years ago as well, and being able to add that add that to his collection in order to really propel him to grow even bigger than what he was. Uh, if you're not familiar, his first CD album came out in 1996, and I believe the name was Reasonable Doubt. Um, yes, that album right there classic to this day but that was when he first got started in 1996 and here we are 2019 2019 so that is what uh, 19 plus 4 23 and 23 years self-made billionaire he didn't inherit it from anyone self-made yes definitely all right so let's go ahead and we're gonna go through the information. Um, if you don't remember about nine years ago, according to Forbes, and I remember this as well, Jay actually met with uh, Warren Buffett and he met with him to get some information on investments and things like that in order to grow. So whenever you guys are wanting to grow, you need to look at someone that you admire that is at the level that you're trying to get to. And that should be one of the people or persons that you want to go and actually communicate with and so that you can get information, um, mentorship, and just the overall um, mindset change of how you should run yourself as well as running your business. You shouldn't go get advice from someone that's broke or, or doesn't have any money or doesn't have the things that you aspire to acquire yourself. You should go to someone that's um, smarter than you, better than you, that has something that you want and uh, show your gratitude to them and you look for that mentorship. And that's exactly what Jay did uh, nine years ago. And obviously Warren Buffett has been on Jay's team, Jay-Z's team for uh, since then. And he's been getting information from Warren Buffett. And if you don't know, Warren Buffett around that time, I believe, was 80. And Jay, you know, um, basically 40 years senior to, to Jay-Z. And so to be able to, to go out and, and meet someone like that is definitely an honor to meet with Warren Buffett. As you guys know that he is the, if not the best out there, but he's pretty well known in the stock community because that's pretty much how he, he built his entire wealth. And I think Warren Buffett has been pushed down to either 
the third richest or the fourth richest person in the world. Um, you, you know, um, Amazon's CEO and, and, and owner of that company uh, is now the number one billionaire. Uh, so, so yeah, definitely um, he met with him and that's how he pretty much got the blueprint. Um, hence the name of the Blueprint album that Jay-Z came out a long time ago with. But he basically got a, a, a grasp of the blueprint that he wanted to create by working with Warren Buffett and getting that information and advice from Warren Buffett. So that definitely helped propel Jay uh, for the long term. And obviously as we see today that he's become the, uh, the first uh, rapper to become a billionaire. So definitely um, congrats to, to Jay on that. But let's, let's go ahead and talk about the few of the things that Jay kind of did in order to get him to the point of where he is today worth one billion dollars. Uh, as you guys uh, might know already, but Jay signed a deal a long time ago where the, um, the liquor that's called Ace of Spades, uh, uh, what you guys are familiar with, but I believe the brand is Armand de uh, Brignac. I don't know how to say it, so don't hold me to it, but he signed a deal with them to be the spokesperson and to promote this particular Ace of Spades champagne, and that deal was worth $310 million alone. So that right there, we're at $310 million deal on promoting the Ace of Spades. And if you guys know, that particular bottle in the clubs and different places were going for around $300. So you could imagine why Jay was putting that Ace of Spades uh, lyric in all of his different rap songs in order to promote um, the alcohol. So the more he promotes it, the more people are going to hear it. And they want to be like, man, I want to live like Jay. I want to I want to be like that. So I want to buy up the bar, you know, when we go out. So they would buy these bottles as well. So the people that listen to his music were definitely familiar with it. And they purchased it because usually we purchase things that we see people that we follow or we like, um, you know, the things that they purchase. So a lot of people would actually purchase this alcohol, $300 a bottle. And these were these were gold bottles. I'll probably pop one up here on the screen so you guys can check it out. Um, one of the other things that Jay um, acquired a lot of his worth from was basically his cash and investments. He had about $220 million in investments in which um, those were things like Uber that he, um, that he um, you know, joined into and I believe uh, Beyonce. Beyonce also invested in Uber um, a long time ago and um, obviously you guys know Uber just hit the, uh, the just hit the stock exchange so they probably really got paid from um, owning their, their Uber ownership especially when they bought it before it even went public so definitely a lot of money there um, and I believe the Uber deal is worth according to Forbes the Uber deal itself is estimated at around 70 million dollars 70 million dollars so that's definitely a part of the 220 million dollars worth within his cash and investments uh, in addition to that um, he had another uh, alcohol a cognac um, that was um, from the giant Bacardi and that was worth 100 million dollars and I believe that company is called um, I don't know how to say it again once, uh, once again the De Deusi the Ussi, uh, you guys can comment down below and tell me how to pronounce that. But yes, definitely had a deal with them worth $100 million in which he helped move about 200,000 cases of this alcohol. And that's basically was able to grow that company nearly 80% annually because Jay-Z was behind and pushing it. Jay-Z is if you if you don't want to believe it or you don't agree with it he is a house name a lot of people know who jay-z is and it's not necessarily because he married beyonce jay-z was popular in the urban community prior to him even going or courting beyonce so don't get it twisted everybody thinks that you know uh b or beyonce has way more money than jay no jay came with the money when he met beyonce Jay had the money. Jay was already at 400 mil, well before Beyonce. And if you ask me, I think that Jay actually helped build and push Beyonce to grow even bigger, just helping her with um, these different deals on 
you know, these they're filling up stadiums. They're filling up stadiums of these concerts. They're making millions of dollars. And I think a lot of that was pushed and, and brought in by Jay-Z. He's always had this mindset and he's been doing this well before Beyonce. So, uh, so yeah, so definitely with that alcohol deal, he was able to uh, have it worth around $100 million. So what is that? We got 220 million plus 100, we're at 320 million plus the 310 million, that's $630 million right there. And then also we have next, which is you guys are more familiar with when he purchased the company Tidal. And that was the streaming service that he bought from the Scandinavian uh, parent company a long time ago. Now this deal was basically, he purchased it for $60 million. And then after he purchased it, he went out and got all the celebrities to get behind it. Justin Timberlake, Calvin Harris, Rihanna, Beyonce, Kanye West, and many more other artists to get behind them because he was trying to commit uh, he was trying to uh, compete with the big dog, with Apple, Apple Music, you know? He's trying to compete with them, so he had to go get the top dogs, you know? So he had to, to bring them on board and not just offer them to be on his platform, Tidal, but also offer them a piece of the ownership of Tidal, you know? So it was definitely incentives from both areas, and that's what helped grow Tidal to be worth $100 million, you know? I mean, but why wouldn't he do this? Like I said, he was competing with Apple Music as well as Spotify. Spotify was number one at one point before Apple Music took them over, but he's competing with both of them. So he had to come up with something. And then he was strategic on getting these artists to put their next album solely on title. So if you wanted to listen to your favorite artist, whether it was Beyonce or Kanye West, you had to uh, purchase a title membership. That membership was going for around $39 a pop when Apple Music and Spotify is charging under $9. So, you know, he, he made it a premium service, but he offered the top artist, Beyonce. Everyone wanted the Beyonce album when it came out. So you had no choice but to go out and purchase the title membership. So it really attracted a lot of people and he purchased that title just four years ago. So he grew it from $60 million to $100 million in four years. That's, that's greatness, guys, come on now. Self, self-made with the collaboration of all these other artists. So it's really, it's really a big accomplishment. And I definitely, I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, uh, really counting his money, but I'm talking about it from a motivational that he wanted something and he went out and, and got it. He figured out what he needed to do to go out and get what he wanted. He studied the trends. He studied different markets and, and so forth, and he understood it. And then he probably had the mentorship from Warren Buffett on how to attack it, and then he went after it. He did what he had to do, and look what he's worth today. So as we were counting this up, I mean, you guys get out a calculator so you can fact check me on my numbers, um, but that's another hundred million for title. So what are we at? Uh, six, seven, 730 million, I believe. All right, $730 million after the title. And then we have Rock Nation. And that was his entertainment company uh, that he had a joint venture, you know, and uh, that's worth $75 million. That's worth 75 million. And you guys know that he created the, um, what is it, the agency in which he has Kevin Durant on his label, uh, Todd Gurley, you know, the sports is, is the, the sports uh, label as well as the record label. Both of those are, are labeled under the Rock Nation and that is worth seventy five million dollars, seventy five million dollars, guys. And, uh, you know, he has definitely uh, the great people that he has under that under that title. Rihanna is J. Cole as well. All right. So that's what are we at? Seven hundred and thirty plus seventy five million that comes to about 805, 810, I don't know guys. Uh, get the calculator out, okay? So, and then we have his music catalog. His music catalog, guys, from, uh, according to Forbes, it says he was with Def Jam in 2004, you know? So he was with them as well as his own music catalog. 
and that is worth a total of 75 million dollars who else do you know that their entire catalog is worth 7 million 75 million dollars and don't forget he negotiated his catalog a long time ago so he can have total if not almost all of it control of it he owns majority of it versus the record label owning majority of it that's usually how most music artists is the uh, the record label owns majority of it so yes he negotiated it so which he could own his master collection he owns majority of it so this is this is definitely greatness this is being smart and strategic going back and renegotiating the deal so you can make more money of your own music a lot of times you don't own anything of it the record producers own it you know the record label owns it but this guy was smart he realized his music would last on and on and on for years and years so he wanted to get ownership of it a long time ago so that it could steadily grow and now that he's a billionaire as of june 3rd today his music is probably going to go up in value and so he's going to be worth even more it's just going to be like a snowball effect a snowball effect it just keeps growing and growing and growing all right and then the other thing that you guys heard a little bit on his latest albums the magnum car uh, magna carter as well as the uh uh 444 album i believe but he talked about buying art artwork this is a rapper from the project he's buying art come on now but yes his art collection is now worth 70 million dollars 70 million dollars all right if you guys haven't already go and listen to the song on the 444 album it talks about him buying the art for two million and then waiting about three or four years later and then it's worth eight million buying investments not buying no jordans he's buying investments things that are going to be worth something that's not going to lose value he's purchasing those in order to grow Come on, that's what we have to do. We got to stop buying this materialistic liability crap and focus on buying assets that's going to grow our wealth, our net worth. That's what you should be focused on. Not that old fancy car so everybody else can w watch you drive around. It's not worth money after five or ten years. Okay? You can buy assets that sit on them, that sit in your house. Artwork that's going to just grow in value over the years. That's what we need to focus on and that's why we're doing this video today. It's more about the motivation. Think guys, think. Strategic decisions will help you grow in the future, okay? In addition to that, I forgot what count we're on. We just added 70 million to the 810 million. So now we're like at 890 million, I don't know. But guys, the next one is his real estate, all right? His real estate, you know, he just bought the home in LA. Los Angeles, California, in which that home is, uh, I think they purchased it in 2017. And they bought that home, I don't know what they bought it for, but you guys know, it's probably $50 million. But he still owns his mansion in East Hampton, I believe that's $26 million according to Forbes, as well as his mansion in Bel Air, his Bel Air estate, that's $88 million, all right? And then he owns his penthouse in Tribeca. Yeah, that was, he snagged that up in 2004 for around, Six million dollars, six point eight five million dollars. It's probably worth ten or fifteen million dollars now, fifteen years later. So yes, his investments in his real estate, holding on to it. It's in New York. You know the value grows up just like it does in California, and that's where his real estate is, California and in New York. It grows substantially in value. So yes, he's definitely acquired a lot of things over the years, which has propelled him today as being the first rapper to acquire or his fortune worth $1 billion. And so I just really wanted to share that with you guys and just looking at the picture from a high level or a 10,000 uh, from the sky viewpoint of just realizing where he came from and the route that he traveled and where he is today from Marcy Projects slanging crack cocaine in the projects being on trial for attempted murder, a stabbing, all of these things, he's overcome them and which has propelled him into where he is now, worth $1 billion, guys. 
Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this. I know, like I stated earlier in this video, that this is not typical of this channel, but I definitely wanted to touch on what I consider my favorite artist, and I wanted to share with you the news that just came out today on him passing the $1 billion mark. So I don't think it's long before he hits the $2 billion mark, but we're gonna stay tuned and like I said, let me know down in the comments what you think about this story, whether you like this content and what you think about Jay um, making this uh, a huge accomplishment in the urban community. Um, definitely, I think it's definitely great news and I definitely like to get your input. So comment down below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below as well as click the bell next to it so you can be notified of all upcoming content that gets uploaded to this channel. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you on the next video. Peace.